Good evening. Welcome to worship on this Ash Wednesday, this day that we together begin our Lenten journey that we know heads straight for the cross and hopefully also to resurrection. Today, if you are worshiping at home and you want to take part in the imposition of ashes, I'd invite you to have a bowl of water or olive oil that you can use to make the sign of the cross on your forehead, just as we do at baptism. If you are here in the worship center and you wish to take part in the imposition of ashes, but prefer that I don't touch you, I also have Q-tips that I can use. So when you come forward, just let me know that. And now I invite you to join me as we share our hearts in worship to our God on this night, this holy night. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgments. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and you would have known wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with Aesop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. Let me teach your ways to offenders, and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God, of my salvation 
and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Have mercy on me, O oh God, according to your steadfast love. Friends in Christ, today with the whole church we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy in communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and before the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our own fault our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have left, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O oh God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God our self-indulgent appetites and ways, our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Restore us, O oh God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O oh God, for your mercy is great. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, 
reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. You may be seated and come forward at the uh, invitation of the ushers. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. To the Lord your God, return to the Lord your God, return to the Lord your God, return to the Lord your God.
accomplish it. Oh, you can be, you can stand. Sorry. Accomplish in us, O oh God, the work of your salvation, that, that we, we may, may show, show forth, forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for Ash Wednesday is from the book of Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord, your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. 
Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the prophets, where is their God? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well-known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. story according to the Holy Gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, 
For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may see, be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where th thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Holy wisdom, holy word, praise to you, O Christ. Today, we come to mark this day, this Ash Wednesday, when you came forward and received the sign of the cross on your forehead today, you heard the words, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. I suspect that after two years of living in a time of plague and pandemic, most of us already know that we are dust, that we are mortal. I find that every year that I get older, there are more things about which I might be anxious, more things that might bring me closer to my death, to my own understanding of my mortality. And now, as I am a parent, to the understanding of the care that I must take for other human beings because they too are mortal. This year many of us gather and we are already exhausted, tired. We are already fearful and anxious. We are already anxious about moving into a time that has a little more hope and less reminders that things are hard. Today, as we gather and we know that Russia is at war, many of us also scroll the headlines to see what next, who joins next, and is this going to be a war again to end all wars? We are anxious, and we are fearful, and we are very aware that what we do and what those around us do matters to our mortality. But tonight we also gather with the reminder that it is not just about what we do and what others do, but what God has done and continues to do. The journey of Lent begins tonight and the word Lent actually doesn't mean remember that you are mortal. The word Lent, I'm told, comes from an old English word that means spring. It is an invitation into a new way of being and understanding, into looking at things that we might not have otherwise seen, into making way for what new growth might come. Every year, Tom and I plant bulbs in the fall. Roughly 500, I think, last year. Is that right, Tom? <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe roughly 800, if I'm remembering it. We're really sore the day after. Well, I don't know if Tom's really sore. I didn't check in with him about that. But I'm really sore the day after we do that. And yet, I am hopeful. And now, as 
The beginning of spring is coming. We're clearing away the places where the snow is still left to look and see if something is showing, if something is growing. There is hopefulness about spring. And the invitation in the ashes that we experience tonight is to find that there might be hopefulness there, too. Many, many years ago, I spent a year as an undergraduate intern in a Lutheran church, someplace in Michigan. The church during this time discovered, or rather the bishop discovered, that the pastor was having an extramarital affair and was subsequently removed from the church and subsequently decided no longer to be a pastor. Also during that time, I having been raised in a family where abuse was rampant, came to my senses and suggested that perhaps I'd only go back to that family if there were certain boundaries in place and I was welcomed not to return home. Also during that time, I was well cared for by a family much like many of you who took me in and fed me and clothed me and gave me a ride to church and made sure that all of the things that I needed were there for me. Shortly after I left and I returned to my college studies, I received a phone call from that woman and she said, everything's going to be okay. My house just burned down, but the kids weren't home, the dog was with me, and everything is going to be okay. In the months that followed, she worked on building a new house and worked on literally going through the ashes of what had been her home. Some of the things that I had collected over my year with her were in her basement. And she called me one day and she told me, this picture that you left in my basement is still here. And I think it needs a little bit of work. But here it is. This picture hangs in my office now. My mentor had given it to me, and I have to tell you that I hated it for the first six months of my internship. I had a dog like this when I was growing up. She is desperate. Who is going to save her and her puppies? It took me six months of looking at this picture every day before I saw the part that we really needed to see. There in the background is the boat, the life raft coming to save her and her puppies. This picture was in my friend's home that burned down, and out of the ashes it came. And when we took it out of its frame, which had been destroyed, we discovered that there's a tiny, tiny bit of smoke damage that in a new frame you can't even see, except to know the story that this came out of the ashes, that there is newness and hope, that someone or something is coming to pull us to out of the ashes. And so tonight, as we mark this day, as we are reminded again that sometimes we are ashes, and sometimes the world around us is ashes. I want to leave you with this blessing written by Jan Richardson, which she entitled, Blessing the Dust for Ash Wednesday. All those days you felt like dust, like dirt, as if all you had to do was turn your face toward the wind and be scattered to the four corners, or swept away by the smallest breath as insubstantial. 
did you not know what the Holy One can do with dust? This is the day we freely say we are scorched. This is the hour we are marked by what has made it through the burning. This is the moment we ask for the blessing that lives within the ancient ashes, that makes its home inside the soil of this sacred earth. So let us be marked, not for sorrow. And let us be marked not for shame. Let us be marked not for false humility or for thinking we are less than we are, but for claiming what God can do within the dust, within the dirt, within the stuff of which the world is made, and the stars that blaze in our bones, and the galaxies that spiral inside the smudge that we bear. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Renew your church, O God. When we have drifted from our call to proclaim repentance and to guide your people toward justice, lead us back to you. Encourage believers who hold the church's doors open to those who have felt excluded. Merciful God, renew your creation, O God. Transform parched places into watered gardens and preserve every creature that awaits the arrival of spring. Turn each of us from practices of environmental exploitation to become responsible stewards of all you have made. Merciful God, renew our civic life, O oh God. Teach those in authority to advocate for the liberation of all who are oppressed and grant them courage to make difficult decisions. We ache for the people of Ukraine, Russia, and surrounding regions, and lift up the turmoil in our families,
communities, and around the world. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Renew our lives, O God. Spare your people from diseases of the body, mind, or spirit, and send healing to those overcome by illness or grief, especially those whom we name in our hearts or out loud at this time. Restore to us the joy of your salvation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew this congregation, O God. During these 40 days of Lent, confirm our sense of mission and expand our imagination for ministry. Deepen our faith, increase our love, and draw us into your unfolding work of healing and restoration. Merciful God, as we mark ashes on our foreheads, we give you praise, O God, for all the saints who died and yet are alive with you, especially John Wesley and Charles Wesley, whom we commemorate today. Receive us with them into your eternal embrace. Merciful God, accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Compassionate God, we offer you these gifts as signs of our time and labor. Receive the offering of our lives and feed us with your grace, that in the midst of death, all creation might feast on your unending life. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The moment at which if you are in the worship center, you want to make sure that you have a communion set. And if you don't, raise your hands and the ushers will bring one for you. And if you are at home, to ensure you have bread and drink that will become for us the body and blood of Christ. The Lord be with you. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. As you eat the bread, hear these words. This is the body of Christ given for you. And as you drink, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. I invite you to stand or embody reverence in the way that is comfortable for you as you receive the blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of Jesus' body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us in God's grace today and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, Accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
receive the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.